well as uh, if biomechanics wasn't boring enough i am going to drill some chemistry into you now so uh, i start off with bone cement it's practice another 10 minutes how much is possible in this time i'll try to cover okay we start with what is bone cement what are its inherent properties all chemistry and a little bit about uh, the use how do we use it in arthroplasty with predominant focus on hip arthroplasty <laughs> now we know that bone cement uh, is an acrylic material that produces a mechanical interlocking effect on hardening it's not a glue it's a grout it fills in the spaces and its essential component is polymethyl methacrylate and methyl methacrylate a bit about history though themistocles gluck is credited to using it for the first time with a total knee made out of ivory it's professor john chanley who uh, made us realize the importance of cement in the joint replacement process more interestingly back here in india in the early 70s when cement was imported it glazed stuck in bombay air, in bombay port because they were they wanted to be you know they wanted to be damn sure that this white powder is not cocaine it was not drugs so that i think uh, this was told to me by one of the people in johnson and johnson who was importing the cement those days and every packet of sterile cement couldn't be opened that's what the customs wanted to prove that it was not cocaine at least no packet should be cocaine now the components are in two parts there is a liquid part and there is a powder part and some cements are mixed powder to liquid a few of them like palacos and most of them are mixed liquid to the powder the liquid components are the monomer the activator the inhibitor and the additives the powder is the polymer that is methyl methacrylate with an initiator which starts off your reaction a radio opacifier so you can see it in the x ray the early cements did not have a radio opacifier there are some controversies about whether this radio opacifier alters the inherent properties of the cement but at this point most of them come with the radio opacifier which can be the zirconium or barium antibiotics some cements come with antibiotics you you choose yours if you want one with antibiotic you use one with antibiotic and of course some additives properties wise its the properties are essentially mechanical and its functions influence the properties of the implanted components and the survival of your implanted joint it's stronger in compression than in tension it's actually weak in tension it has a low bending modulus of elasticity and it has a it's a visco elastic polymer and subjected to long term effects of creep fatigue and stress relaxation which are some of the reasons why cement eventually tends to fail it is essentially used to fix the artificial joint again fixation is a misnomer it acts as a grout fills up the spaces and stabilizes the processes i do not know whether you can use it that it is fixing anchoring the implant to bone is a better term it transfers load from prosthesis to the bone and thus optimizes stress strain distributions of course it is also used to carry out controlled local release of antibiotics the reaction of cement setting is essentially exothermic there are cold curing cements in the market it's a viscous process it's, its viscosity is an important property we'll discuss it a little bit later creep that it able to adjust into the pores once it is set it shrinks during the process of polymerization and thus release some residual monomer into the circulation polymerization heat can vary but what needs to be understood is that what is actually transmitted in vivo is different from what you feel in your hand what you feel in your hand is not the temperature that is transmitted to bone because it is dissipated into the thin cement layers blood circulation some heat dissipation goes to the prosthesis and some to viable tissue so you don't really the amount of heat that you feel when you are setting cement in your hand that's not the amount of uh, heat that it dissipated to the bone some amount of shrinkage occurs on average between 3 to 5% but it is usually not considered significant vacuum mixing causes much more volume shrinkage than hand mixing residual monomer the one which is supposed to produce the so called cement implantation syndrome that is when you are implanting or pressurizing cement the sudden drop in blood pressure this this is again a little bit of controversy in the recent literature which talks about that cement implantation syndrome may not be related to the monomer itself but may be related to the release of fat pressurized the release during the pressurization process in any case this residual mm monomer can be found in the circulation for a few days and it is believed to be metabolized by the krebs cycle now viscosity is one of the most important uh, properties of your cement is the defined as the resistance of the fluid to deformation under shear forces or the thickness of the fluid it will affect the way that you can handle the cement 
how how much time you can handle the cement and its pressurization into the cancellous bone and how it can resist the bleeding from the bone to allow it to interlock into the pores it is essential to know the viscosity of cement that you are using to so know how to handle it in the working phase it has to be sufficiently viscous so that you can push it into your area where you want to put the cement like the femoral cavity at the same time it has to be high enough so that it resists the back bleeding from the bone itself it should allow you a comfortable working time so on this basis you have low viscosity cements which have a longer running running phase that is a longer waiting phase and the true working time in which the cement can be picked up with a gloved hand is rather short setting time is usually quite variable we tend to use most of the time as per a recent british study most of the surgeons tend to prefer a low viscosity cement than a high viscosity cement a high viscosity cement has uh, practically uh, not much of uh, time from the time you finish mixing from the time to you implant it becomes ready for implantation almost immediately medium viscosity as the name suggests has an intermediate viscosity begins in a low viscosity state while being mixed and it allows a very easy and homogeneous mixing of the two components now how do you use it it has got three steps the optimal mixing optimal bone preparation and optimal delivery in all these three together you can use the cement optimally in arthroplasty before you start mixing rehearse your implantation i am assuming you have prepared i am not teaching you joint replacement here redo and recheck the steps once you have mixed the cement where you are going to put the cement who is going to give the implant how you are going to put the implant everything is there in place one trolley should be kept aside everything should be kept aside put your assistants in order tell them do this do this do this it should be a set process there is no wasting time once the cement is mixed keep the final implant at hand and on the table don't open the box once you have started mixing keep everything ready all your instruments for cement cement removal your knife your scoop everything should be there right in front of you it doesn't allow you time to play around your phases as you mix your cement are the mixing phase the waiting phase the working phase and the setting phase now the mixing phase is after you have started the added the liquid to the powder most of them are that way or the powder to the liquid it wets the pre polymerized powder and there is a substantial increase in the viscosity of the cement but it still remains low as compared to the later stages the mixture is now still a homogeneous mass it looks like toothpaste to you hmm? then comes a waiting phase where you don't have to do anything you just have to wait around the viscosity of the mixture increases it turns into a sticky dough during this process all you have to do is pick it up and start feeling it and see how much sticky it is at this point the process provides an indication of the end of the waiting period when the cement is neither sticky nor hairy and it does not really mix to the stick to your unpowdered gloves it is a sufficiently low viscosity at the working phase this is the time when you must start using your cement and the viscosity still continues to increase it has start it has not really started becoming hot but there is a sort of a balance between the expansion during heat and the setting uh decrease in the volume now here you have to closely monitor the viscosity as you start putting it and you must implant the cement before the end of the working phase so here in the early stages the cement you are finding it is still a little sticky and when you enter into the working phase you find that it is no longer sticking to your unpowdered glove and when two cement balls just stick to each other they are sort of ready for implantation and uh, if you find that a cement is becoming a bit firm please do not implant your prosthesis at this stage you'll get into trouble so hardening and curing is when your cement has started becoming warm you must keep your uh, prosthesis rock stable in position at this time and during this time your cement temperature will increase and then slowly normalize down to normal temperature these three are not exactly the way that you should do it but from your top to your top right you will find that the cement has become firm and lower down in the lower frame you will see that cement has finally set at this point it's really hot it takes another minute or so before it comes down what's happened so you'll have to give me another minute i'm stuck on this <laughs> you'll have to give me another minute or two what do you do i'm sorry sir 
Give me a minute. I'm almost towards the end. So at this point, you need to you need to be sure at what point you need to implant your cement. So you just hold this. You keep feeling it during your mixing, uh, during your waiting phase. When it's no longer sticking to your gloves, you can take it into your hand. And at this point, that you start implanting the cement and pressurizing it. So this process of implantation has to be accurately timed. So in the first is the dough phase. The dough phase is the time of your mixing and you mix the mixing phase along with your waiting phase constitutes your dough time. From this dough time when you can pick up your cement with your gloves to the time it starts becoming firm is your working phase and then last is your setting or the hardening phase. Total time that you get that setting time is from the beginning of mixing till the time the cement becomes hard may vary from cement to cement on an average is between 8 to 10 minutes. So. So you, a lot of factors will affect. Okay. Can you push beyond this? Can you push beyond this? Next slide. So the total time that you get for setting depends on a number of factors. The first important factor is the ambient temperature. Uh, a lot of people believe that pre-chilling of the cement is good for putting it. So pre-chilling of the cement is absolutely fine. You put the cement into the fridge. Don't put it in overnight. Don't chill it too long. And more important than this, get the cement to the theatre a few minutes before you implant it. Let it reach the room temperature. What is more important than ambient temperature is your theatre temperature itself. Uh, when it comes to the theatre temperature, the theatre temperature is maintained optimum, so you get optimum time for working. The lower the theatre temperature, more is your time of working. If you mix too fast, your speed of mixing, if you mix too fast, the local temperature is more and therefore your your time of setting will become less from time from cement to cement and powder uh, depend on the powder to liquid ratio will also change your thing now bone preparation is extremely important your bone is thoroughly lavaged what is recommended is pulsatile lavage and the use of brushes however in osteoporotic bone be careful do not do pulsatile lavage you will pulsatile lavage out the entire bone itself especially in rheumatoids so what is important to take out the uh, thing? Use either epinephrine sponges, rather risky in old patients, or you use hydrogen peroxide gauzes. That is also again controversial. Well, everything is controversial. Bone should look white. It should look clean. It should look devoid of cloth so that your cement can interdigitate well. And you should be able to pressurize the cement in. I'll just tip through it. Now, the last point is evolution of cement technique, a sort of history. Cementation, the quality of cementation depends upon the way you prepare the cement, the way you prepare the bone and how you implant it. Three steps which I told you. Your first generation cementation described was limited bone bed preparation, unplug femur, you don't put a distal plug, stiff doughy cement introduced by hand and as Chanley said, cement is forced on the track of the medullary canal as a stiff dough and the insertion at the point of the tapered stem of the prosthesis expands the stiff dough and pushes into a marrow lining of the yeah, cancellous lining of the marrow space so very limited bone preparation just flush it there is no distal plug and you put the cement and thumb it down second generation you put a canal restrictor hand mix the cement lavage by syringe and cement injection from distal to proximal using a cement gun and the third generation a little variation more or less academic you use both proximal and distal seals you mix with vacuum and inject under pressure Vacuum mixing, number of benefits, it produce, allows a much more uniform mix, gives you more working time, improves cement homogeneity, decreases the exposure of the working of the people around you to the monomer. This is the cement mixing apparatus that we have in our theatre. It's the nozzle system, the cement gun, and the vacuum apparatus. There is another mixing bowl. This is the proximal seal, which is applied, the distal seal, and cement pressurization. So the take-home messages are. Modern cement techniques are the key to long term success, meticulous bone preservation, distal femoral plug, pulsatile lavage, retrograde cement application using a gun and sustained cement pressurization using a pressurizer. And there is definite evidence base for vac uh, evidence for vacuum mix and distal femoral, st femoral stem centralizer. Rest of the hype of different implants is still yet to be proved, but cementation has stood the test of 40 years of 40 years of time. So I believe we should know the science of cementation well. Thank you for your patient listening.